Hello everyone and welcome back to The Geek Wave. This is the low budget show. It's the show so low it has no budget. And while we take a break from the Halloween fever of what this month is bringing us, we're going to sit back, relax, talk about some really fun content. This idea came to me because there's a couple news pieces we're going to be talking about that just inspired me to go, you know what, I've wanted to do this video for a while. Now might be the time to do it. You know, let's talk about some of these fascinating characters that I am, I, I just adore them. So I wanted to talk about them. Now, take a break from Halloween. I'm not Halloweened out. I could talk about Halloween forever. We'll definitely be talking a little Halloween as we get into some of these characters. But before that, we, we do have some pieces of news to talk about. And like I said, I think this news week was pretty much just like made for me because the stuff we're talking about is pretty much just what I do in my spare time. <laughs> I think that's pretty fun. Just so much just made for me just to talk about, which I love. And that's just leads into what this great episode's going to be. And then some Harrison Ford news. <laughs> so the first piece of news I want to talk about is that Matilda Lutz, who is an actor I do not know much about, well, she has been cast as Red Sonia, you know, that classic fun character we all love, and uh, we got a first look at it, and okay, I was uh, kind of impressed, I'm, I'm very excited to see how this is going to go, she is going to be playing Red Sonia, and uh, I'm genuinely curious, it looks pretty cool, like it's, um, I, was the studio that's making this, was it Millennium or something? It's kind of exciting. So MJ Bassett, there was a huge, there's like a bunch of casting bullshit going on a little bit. You know, Singer was attached for a long time and Hannah Joel Kamen was attached for a while. But I guess settling here, it works again. It's not like as big name as Hannah Joel Kamen and I understand that. But the one image we saw, I like the armor, red hair. That's always cool to see. There is this kind of weird stigma going around Hollywood where we're casting actors to replace redheads. And I'd have to imagine, even if they got Hannah Jo Kamen, she'd do the red hair because the character's called Red Sonia. So you'd have to imagine that's what they'd go for. But they could just use it as a name, you know? All I'm saying is this is very exciting. And we have a little bit of the cast announcement we could see here. We have Wallace Day, Robert Sheehan. Uh, is that the guy from that uh, Umbrella Academy? I can't remember. It's Dragan, Michael Bisping is Hawk, Martin Ford is General Carlack, and Eliza Mantigo as Amarak. So that's going to be very fun. I, I'm super excited for this. I, I want this to kind of usher in the new era of the characters we're going to talk about because... These are the films I want more than I want anything in the Marvel movies. I'm not going to say anything else about it. I'm just going to say, if Red Sonja is a success, and if the next piece of news we're going to be talking about is a success, I can imagine some of these characters could be next up on the chopping block. In a good way. So, jumping away from Red Sonja, let's go over to space this time. We were in the past, we're going to the far future, because Sony has released their little bit of news that Sydney Sweeney, the probably, I don't want to say the most talented young actress today, but one of the most compelling on screen, who has one of the best personalities I've seen in a long time for a young actor, she has been cast, she will star in, and she will produce the Barbarella reboot. Now, anybody who's been a longtime fan of this channel, or anybody who knows me in the real world, knows this is my character. Like, I could sit here obsessively talk about Barbarella, the history of the character, what she represents to stories going forward for feminism and modern storytelling devices and love on screen. I could sit here and talk about this character forever because the Jane Fonda movie, in my top 10 movies of all time, the character in my top 10 comic book characters of all time, Every comic book, I've done reviews on this channel of the most recent comic book. I own almost every like reboot from Dynamite of the character. I have collected editions of the original prints of the book. This is my character. I can't think of a better actor for the age they're looking for for this Barbarella than Sydney Sweeney. Was she my first choice? No. I would have went older. I would have went Kristen Stewart. But you're going this age... I think Sweeney's got it because, one, 
she will play the more seductive side where it's like a fun, happy person in this world. And two, she's got a relationship with Sony. And if she's going to be producing this, you have to imagine there is some attachment to this character for her. This makes me so happy. Like, out of anything I could have ever predicted to come out in news this week, Sydney Sweeney doing a Barbarella movie was not one of the things I ever predicted. I have to imagine... I, 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 I have to imagine this is what Sony's hoping their Wonder Woman is because I don't know if they have all the rights to the Valiant characters. But I'm just going to say this. If this is done right, and again, I have no idea because Sony's very hit or miss on these things, this could be the coolest news of all time, honestly. And we'll talk about Barbarella a little bit more in this video. I just I just want to say this, like, I don't think a lot of younger audiences understand how important this character is to what you have in stories today. And I, I don't want to get, like, too far into it, but you don't get Wonder Woman... 77 with linda carter or things like charlie's angels well, maybe you, you get some of that stuff but you don't get like those empowering characters in costumes being a woman being a happy woman who isn't this rageful violent or angry or is held up with brevity you don't get that without barbarella and jane fonda and i i think it's a study that people could do to show you how important that is and something I always tell people, this isn't a woman who is just, like, horny. Her weapon is love. She uses love to calm down and change the situation into the favor of her. And I think Sydney Sweeney could do that. She's a gorgeous woman. I can't wait to see what this is going to be. If they're looking for a Pygar, which, please tell me you're looking for a Pygar, I will get ripped for it. <laughs> like... <laughs> I, there's so many, I mean, I would be anybody in a freaking Barbarella movie, but if you want somebody to play Pygar, hell, I'll, I'll get swole for it, I'll pretend I'm blind for it, I'll do anything for it, or, or you want me, if they're, I don't think they're gonna, like, reboot the, like, original movie, but you need someone to be Durant Durant, like, hell, I'll do it, man, I'll do it, my goodness, is this exciting, I'll even be the talking character from the most recent one vix i'll do it anything to be in the barbarella world i will do it and try to just be a part of that i'll do it i'm so excited barbarella content will be coming out the wazoo on this channel you have no idea <laughs> yo you don't know what's coming well you do because there's not a lot of barbarella content we could cover we'll do like a video maybe an entire geek wave talking about her we'll do like a commentary and a you know it's all coming. Don't you worry. We're talking Barbarella. Here's something else that kind of shook me. They were talking about this for a while, but it's confirmed now. Liam Neeson will be doing a Naked Gun movie. Yep. He will. <laughs> Liam Neeson is one of those most fascinating actors who has like one of the strangest careers out there because you, you kind of feel him as like one of these top guys in Hollywood, but then it's like, Actually, is he? He kind of like from Taken onwards changed his trajectory to this style. So a Seth MacFarlane produced Naked Gun film with Liam Neeson is a concept I could see explored. Does that mean it's something I want to see? I don't know, but I can't be mad at it for happening. I just don't think today's audience can handle it if that makes sense. Like, I've watched the Naked Gun movies fairly recent in the past couple of years, and I'm like, this won't fly. Like, this is, it's one of those things where there's certain comedies that if you were like a, fil like a film auteur or anybody who is in our sphere where you're like, you know more about film than any of your friends, right? And you're like, well, they want you to pick the movie, pick a funny movie. You can't show them Naked Gun because it's cringy and today's audiences doesn't respond well to cringy or laugh at it anymore, so you can't really do that. And maybe some of it holds up, but I just don't know if it works. So this feels like McFarlane making something for himself, and I don't have a problem with that. What I will say is, is that anything people truly want is something that specific. I don't know. I guess we'll wait and see. For all I know, it could be the movie of the decade. But probably not, you know, because it's Naked Gun. Leslie Nielsen is the reason that worked. And I could imagine, I could imagine that 
Liam's got that in him, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. And the final piece of news I do want to talk about is something that's been kind of in, up in conversation for a bit now. So it was announced on the hot mic. This is where the scoop was officially started and the source was revealed. Well, not the source wasn't revealed, but uh, it was the source where this dropped was on the hot mic with John Roca and Jeff Snyder because Jeff Snyder has all these information. Harrison Ford will be playing uh, Thunderbolt Ross in the uh, Captain America 4 in the Thunderbolts movie. And I have to imagine they're paying him over $10 million for five minutes. So, good for Harrison. Like, I don't need to see it. I, I mean, I could definitely see how, after Indiana Jones, he is going to be like, I will work small roles for a good paycheck. Because that's really, that should really be his swan song, but I understand how some of these guys just can't stop working. They'll drop dead on set one day. So, if this is true, okay, I don't really care. I don't think you needed to recast the role. And if you did recast it, which it looks like they did, why did you cast older than William Hurt? Wouldn't you want to go with somebody like the same age or younger to do it? Interesting. Fascinating. Curious how this is going to play off. Look, he's not going to be a Red Hulk. Unless it's going to be like, he's going to do these two movies, he'll Hulk out, and then we can just use him as the voice of Red Hulk and have Lou Ferrigno or somebody do the mocap? I don't know. Cool. <laughs> it's so weird to me that Harrison will still get like the need to do these things because he doesn't have to. Nothing about him says, I have to do this, but the fact that he's willing to does say a lot about his character in a sense where he's like, yeah, I'm still committed to this acting gig. There's still stuff I like about it. So cool. Harrison Ford might be Thunderbolt Ross. Is that, a, is that fun? I guess. It's something we're going to have to live with, potentially. So that's it. All the news. When we come back from the break, we're going to be jumping into the world of comic books and the wonderful women of said comics. So folks, you're in for a treat today because I have picked out 15 of the most amazing, creative, beautiful women throughout comic book history that have no affiliation with the two big companies. I'm not talking Marvel. I'm not talking DC. That's a whole other video. The reason I want to do this now is pretty much because of the Red Sonja movie news and the Barbarella movie news. I figured, you know, these are characters who fit a certain umbrella. I, I can't really like pinpoint what that umbrella is. I, I'm calling this video like the other women of comics, but it's not that because they have their own place in comic bookdom. So I, I, I don't know what that bubble is. It's kind of like horny meets fun meets demonic goth women. But it's also just taken like a fun concept of like those old school kind of you know, Flash Gordon, Tarzan, John Carter-esque characters and doing like a feminine spin on it and making something completely different. But it's just really fun, you know? So I picked 15 characters and this is not going to be like a thorough breakdown of their history or their comic book history. This is just me going to give you a list of these amazing characters who all represent something special. We'll talk about their story a little bit, their place in the comic book, um, what they represent, how they act, who they are. Just give you a little bit of like a sense of like, hey, if you're looking for an iconic figure in the comic book world who maybe isn't Wonder Woman or Captain Marvel, and you're like, who are these other pillars of the comic book industry that could represent these female tendencies? These are some of the ones to do it. Some older characters, some newer characters. One's very new that I threw on this list solely because I think she is going to kind of be the most modern depiction of what that character is going to be. So I wanted to put her on the list. And I will be putting time codes in the video if you want to talk see, let me, see me talk about like a specific character. You can go to that and there's going to be pictures up for you to see. And if you're listening to this on the podcast feed, you won't get the pictures, but you'll know all the different characters. Because this is my shit, too. You know, like, I've talked about with Barbarella 
that character is just so fun to me. Like, I love everything Barbarella represents. And I guess we could start with Barbarella being the first one we talk about. She definitely started off in, like, you know, the old kind of magazines. I think they were, like, the French, and then they were just kind of, like, grew in popularity, moved over here to be this new creation. But she is just classic retro science fiction, which is one of my favorite type of genres, and something that's incredibly fun and profound. And you can have so many cool ideas presented with it. You can go to so many cool creative ideas but the core of Barbarella and I know we just kind of talked about this in the news the core of Barbarella is this is a woman who is comfortable in her ways and knows what she has as at her disposal she knows what her weapon is she knows how to use it she knows how to flaunt it how to taunt it and she is comfortable doing so that is the core thing of Barbarella is that this is not a character who is uncomfortable in her sexuality it's not a character who feels nervous or anxious she is like I love all beings all beings deserve love every creature is beautiful and romantic and poetic in their own ways I'm going to protect those that need it if people try to oppose my way of doing things that is okay but it's not going to be the best and you'll notice as we kind of like talk about this whole list some of the more older concepts definitely come out of like this certain era of creation where it's like, you know, the political movements were like, we can't show this stuff, but the comic books were like, well, we're European. Well, we're just going to give you like these beautiful women talking about sexy stuff, doing these things because the, the, the culture is like, you can't do that. But comics are anti-culture. They've always been on the other side of culture where people are just like not accepting of them all the time. So they say their own stories and they do their own thing and Barbarella is a perfect example of that it's like the world doesn't want you to be a peaceful being well what if there was a woman who saved the galaxy being born of love and brevity and helping people in a more mature manner than just violence it's awesome she has had so many fun iterations over the years so many different stories and like I said there is a movie for Barbarella it's a really fantastic movie and she had a really good recent comic book run that I'm going to tell people to check out. It is well worth it. She's a really cool character. Very classic. There is hardly a bad depiction of her. And every time you see her, you're like, oh, this is a woman whose whole existence is just being built to help. Not being like a burden or a hindrance or like an agent of chaos or an agent of war. She is just a good woman trying to use her powers of femininity of beauty to help the galaxy. So many characters take inspiration from her. So many costumed characters take inspiration from her. And there is really nobody quite like her. Barbarella is pretty badass. I really enjoy that character. And she might be, well, I wouldn't say she's the most like, you know, polite or like friendly, but she definitely is like one of the more heroic of the people we're going to talk about because as we look at this list, you'll notice like the key things are they're sexy, they don't wear a lot of clothes, and there's ideas of demonic and, and death and these crazy darkness behind it. So we'll start with like the other big one. I think one of the biggest ladies of comics that, of course, is Vampirella. And Vampirella, it's, it's a concept that I know a lot of people are familiar with. She also had a movie, not as successful as Barbarella's movie. But the thing is like, it's these characters don't get like the staying power in the culture like some of the other ones do if any of them were to break over into the mainstream it would probably be vampirella the premise is very simple she is from a planet of vampires where the rivers flow red of blood and she comes to earth because she is like trying to track down an old vampire named dracula and she stays there and has some wacky adventures. It's like a fish out of water thing. Look at this pretty girl come to our planet. Look at the different way she exists. And the thing with her too is you, you'll notice a lot of writers try to take her into different directions, different time periods, different ideas. And it, it opens up the larger thing that people love. Of course, vampires already have like that sexy, sexy sensual nature about them where everything's so you know, lustful, and there's that hunger and desire formed into the world. And when you have that wrapped in such a pretty bow, it makes the thing a little bit more enticing. So you just love to see it. You love to play with it. Another character that's kind of like old school, she appeared 69, I, I want to say, around that era. 
and it's just morphed into the kind of like the side chick of comics. I know that's such a bad analogy for it, but it's like, oh, you want to read something a little bit more like fun and creative. That's not just like your standard Marvel, like, oh, look at all these fun people. It's like, hey, this girl enjoys what she's doing. She's very fun, very flirty, off in her own little bubble, doing her own little thing, having her own little adventures. That is where you get Vampirella. Not a real costume. Again, you're going to notice a lot of these characters don't actually wear a full-on costume. That's okay, I guess, because that is what this character is billed as. You don't go into this expecting Shakespeare. Though, in my opinion, some of these stories emulate those beautiful poetic stories, but whatever, you know what you're getting from this. It's a beautiful vampire girl doing vampire stuff. Again, playing with like the, demo the demonic entity a little bit. It's kind of cool. Vampirella is the most mainstream out of all of these characters, I think. And this is another one where I'm like, when are we going to get the movie? Red Sonja we're getting, and how are we not going to like spin a Vampirella tale out of there? I don't know. I hope we do. Because she's just like fun and creative, and there's so many ideas you can explore of her. Any time period you want, you could play with. She has a lot of ongoing mini series right now at Dynamite. They're all kind of worth checking out because the character just works on so many conceivable levels. Again, they look sexy, but that's not the driving force behind any of these characters. The truth is they're powerful women and they just understand how to take that concept of like, oh man, it's a time, it, we're from a time period where, you know, being sexy was a sin. And now we're these powerful characters who still get dynamite to sell books probably <laughs> i love her i love all of these characters but vampirella special place in my heart just because it's one of those first characters who are like oh yes i will steal that for stuff i'm working on i like that and let's jump over to another character kind of in the same boat red sonia or red sanja however you want to pronounce it this is just the same kind of concept but what if we were to do a medieval thing you know she also had a movie <laughs> but the thing is like another one that's mainstream just the, like a beautiful warrior-esque woman who will kill you hack and slash you up to pieces do damage to your life she is just a violent chaotic woman just like that strong empowering female character and there is like the conan connection but she's her own entity and she can do her own thing have her own existence she is just like kind of the opposite end of the spectrum when it comes to like the vampirella thing vampirella is a little bit more like fun and like sexy and just like hey we're gonna kind of like look at like this prestige we're doing to these types of stories where it's like oh an old dracula spinning a yarn of horror and then you just see when it comes to sanja it's just like what if we just cut off a bunch of people's heads how would they react? And you have to imagine they probably wouldn't like that. But when it's a beautiful woman in a bikini with some weird armor on her slashing your head off, how can you be mad at that? A beautiful character, a beautiful woman with, again, just like Vampirella, there is a lot of mini series out right now that Red Sonia has. They are very fascinating. These are the two characters that break through to the mainstream slightly. You know, I, I love both of them immensely i'm a little more of a vampirella fan like, that's just my thing i've always liked veronica a little bit more than betty you know that is just how i am <laughs> but they are just great she's a fun character going to a fantasy world and having a beautiful woman to slash and hack you to pieces what is wrong about that there is nothing wrong about that it's just cool and fun and you adore it you just adore it you adore her she's great she's just the best right sanja Going to break through to the mainstream of her movie. Hopefully it spins off to more of these characters getting their own movies. Because that would be really cool. And let's move over to a new direction of the world. You understand, like, again, we're kind of like homaging these classic characters. A Conan parody. A uh, pastiche for Dracula character. Barbara is like a Flash Gordon-y type. What about a Tarzan type of character? Now, throughout the history of comic books, there have been countless iterations of a jungle character like a jungle woman a jungle cat a jungle goddess the one i'm going to focus on because she's kind of modern up a little bit is sheena queen of the jungle now 
there are a lot of iterations of a jungle girl. We're doing Sheena because one, she has an ongoing book right now. And two, I have to talk about this character solely because of my grandfather. My grandfather is a jungle guy for some reason. He has, he used to have like this a huge poster of Tarzan on his door when he was a grown man, right? Like that's his shit. So I was with him when he bought all these new Sheena books. And I just think this character is exactly what you want when you're talking about like not obscure comic characters, but that other thing in comics that people don't realize is that Tarzan is one of those classic characters that is the pillar for everything. And Sheena best represents like a modern update of that character. A beautiful woman in leather print clothing, running through the jungle, protecting the creatures of the jungle, protecting the people of the jungle, attacking those who go against her. What more do you want? Those are types of stories that should be told, should be explored. And this character just has the badass nature to do it. You know, again, it's it's just like a classically trained character off in her own world, doing her own thing. There are so many cool iterations of a Jungle Queen-esque character. There's like Jungle Girls and Woman of the Jungle, Queen of the Jungle. We're doing Sheena because, again, it's ongoing. Again, she represents like the, I guess, the larger collective of something I wanted to talk about, which was like the Jungle Girl persona. Because there's so many jungle girls out there and she's just kind of like the most well-known at this moment in time where you could be like, Oh yeah, that's the queen of the jungle. And she's cool. How could you hate a woman who protects creatures of the jungle? How could you, if you do you're a terrible person because this character is just pure and fun and so perfect. And you'll notice so far, every character we have talked about has a relationship to dynamite comics. They have, the rights to a bunch of those old school characters, including like John Carter, Doc Savage, Flash Gordon, I think they have too, Thunderball, like they have all those classic characters and they have these ones too. But kind of moving away from Dynamite for a second, these are in no particular order, just the order I wrote them down on my list, but we'll be back to Dynamite, don't you worry. We're going to be talking about a very important character for a certain time period of comic books. So a lot of the characters we have just talked about are very old school, very classic from like the 60s and 70s and even the 50s for some of those concepts. Let's move to an era when independent comic books were kind of up and coming and pumping up some good shit. And let's talk about Lady Death. So Lady Death is a character that first appeared in a Evil Ernie comic book. And to learn more about Evil Ernie, you're going to have to get this video a like because I'm not talking about Evil Ernie. Essentially, she was just a character that was like, what if Evil Ernie found the embodiment of the most beautiful woman in the world? And then it turned out she was the devil. We're kind of getting into that theme right now as we talk about some of these other characters. Lady Death is just the poster child for like the sexy demonic figure that like, steers you in the direction of like a sexy woman, you know? Like a siren calling you to like, hey, you want to read some really fucked up comics? What about this one where like a beautiful, like fair skinned woman is in like a bikini and she's like a demonic figure just like having fun and trying to like, you know, toy with you and sleep with you. You're like, yeah, okay, I could get on board for that. Thank you very much. Please and thank you. I don't have, like, the personal, like, love for Lady Death like some people do. It might just be because I didn't have, like, the affinity for Coffin comics like some people have. But when you're looking at, like, these powerful women of comic books, Lady Death is stronger than people realize. She is an established figure in this world, so you have to talk about her. She is an important part of this history. And that kind of leads us to another character that's a part of her mythos, in a sense, and that is... Hell Witch, another character that kind of premiered in like the Lady Death mythos. Again, you'll notice the theme is pretty apparent. Lady Death, a demonic figure. This person's called Hell Witch. She is just a different colored woman looking more like a demon who is tempting you in a different direction. I do not personally know a lot about Hell Witch. These are not the comic books I would normally read, but if you're looking at the history of these characters, they have a very important staying power. People like them. I like them, so that's cool. So that's the Coffin Comics talk. We're not going to be talking Coffin anymore, really. So Hell Witch, Lady Death. The Coffin is like its own kind of entity that just publishes like specific characters. I think they do some work through 
dynamite or dynamite adjacent publishing houses where like they might have like some connections for things they could talk about. So yeah, if you want to learn more about those coffee comics has a website, you can check that out, but let's kind of like slip back into the world of dynamite because we got a couple more people to talk about like purgatory. And I know what you're thinking purgatory, like the place between heaven and hell. Yes. But this is spelled like Tori, like it's a girl. So purgatory is another one of those things where I'm like, okay, I get it. The reason this one works for me a little bit more is because it's almost having a little bit more fun than just being like like a sexy icon. Purgatory is like a creature of two worlds. She's the demonic figure on like a mission with Lilith. And you're like, okay, that's kind of something to explore. I think the design is just a little bit more iconic for me. Maybe it's because I love like the black and the reds coming together. Something about it just sparks so many interesting ideas to me. It's very cool. And it's kind of like, again, like a fun character. If you were to mix Lady Death and Vampirella and like those two identities and just add like some bloodlust in there, you're going to get Purgatory. Like the perfect mix of just like classic and, and old school. Not classic and old school. The perfect mix of like modern and classic where she's just definitely like a modern depiction of this character, a modern depiction of this idea. And just like, hey, she's got old school mentalities, baby. She's part of like the old regime. She feels like a new creation. She is kind of a new creation, but she just works the bill perfectly. Another scary demonic lady. You'll notice that's a key theme throughout this. Just people love their scary... Because it's the thing of just like the sin or going against like what God... Not even what God wants you is like, oh, it's dangerous. It's, it's like against the law it's something you can't do there's so much just like seduction involved in that like the idea of something you can't have and i think that is fair in every aspect of the word that is a huge allure to these characters where it's like look at this sexy devil lady i'm gonna buy the comic book because one there are so many variant covers where sometimes the covers are topless sometimes we have actors actually cosplaying as the covers and two there's a chance this lady's going to be fun to read that's the selling point for a lot of these characters and purgatory fits that perfectly i want to i guess i should state it here if you are interested there is currently on a bunch of like you know the, the toy sites where you can buy your toys a loose collector who's like a customizer from back in the day he's working with us like a big company to produce a bunch of these characters currently on the selection you can get uh lady death is available now tarna is available now which we'll get to in a minute here and then hell Witch will be available soon purgatory vampirella red sonia are up there too a couple other ones like chi is available chi's not on my list unfortunately but you know what i mean so there's gonna be some characters you can buy figures of and maybe if i get i'm i have a couple of them pre-ordered i think i'm gonna buy all of them once i see how the couple ones look the Purgatory, a great design, super cute demon lady. Let's jump over to a character kind of more associated in the Vampirella mythos a little bit. This character does have some connection to Vampirella, kind of. That is Pantha. Pantha, another character kind of like the Queen of the Jungle, where you could pick a different interpretation of Pantha and get something new each time. So Pantha is kind of this... The current obsession really with this character is kind of just like she is like the embodiment of like a goddess, the panther goddess, and she can turn into a panther and she's like a hero <laughs> or just like one of those characters doing those things. And yeah, it works. I think it's one of the lesser of the 15 I'm talking about, but something about her just works fine. And she's cool. And she's a little bit more like mysterious and, you know, suave and a little bit more like holy, like the opposite end of what you're seeing where it's like, instead of demons, it's a goddess. And that's kind of cool. Just switching it up slightly and a little bit. I admire that. I respect them trying to do something differently there. And she looks cool. A very iconic design that has a lot of different interpretations. She has gone through a bunch of different aesthetics over the years. And I think that is worth noting. But Pantha is a cool concept that, of course, we had to talk about. Now, we got a couple more big deals to talk about before we get into the more modern characters. First off, like I said, there was the huge push back in the day with John Carter. People loved him. Well, kind of 
adjacent to John Carter is the separate entity that again this is a this was a huge name I knew growing up solely because of my grandfather who loves this character as much as he loves Tarzan in this world Dejah Thoris Dejah Thoris is the character who is essentially the John Carter woman and I, I know that's like lame but I would argue people might know her more than John Carter <laughs> It's just, what if you took that aesthetic, the the lady on Mars, the warlord of Mars, take that into a woman, she's doing her own thing, she's regal, she is royal, she's off in her own missions in space, being like a, a spy or an assassin or just some very important warrior woman off doing whatever she wants, and she's just in a bikini. Common theme? Yes, it is. <laughs> just women in bikinis, but... Deja Thoris is just badass. Like, she is just a powerful woman with a great design, a great concept behind her, and has survived longer than a lot of characters have. Like, she is one of those original characters. I'm trying to find it now. I believe her first appearance is in the Princess of Mars book from 1917. So she's over 100. And she is just still kicking ass. She still has people supporting her off in her own bubble. It's it's kind of cool to see. And it's one of those classic characters too that just holds up. And now with more like contemporary audiences, we're depicting her as maybe a, more than just a white woman, you know, and that's kind of cool to see. But it's such a cool concept and a very fun character. And something I, I, I guess I should make clear too, because Dynamite owns a lot of these books and a lot of these characters' rights, they cross over a bunch. So Purgatory has crossed over with Vampirella. Deja Thoris has crossed over with Vampirella. Red Sonja has crossed over with them. Like everybody is crossing over with everybody. So you get a little bit taste of all these powerful women kind of fighting each other. They come together in the end. Deja Thoris, though, the oldest of the bunch, a powerful princess warrior who will defend her planet, defend her people, and will do it wearing the skimpiest outfit you will ever see in your life. That's really cool. I like a good character that's just science fiction based, old school science fiction, because that's my shit, and can still survive the world. I think that's awesome. Test of time. It's it's awesome to me that some of these old school concepts can still hold up and still have relevance in today's audience. So that's really exciting. And I do enjoy that. Because moving away from Deja, we go to a, a character who is actually a real person. So it's kind of an obscure, I, I don't even want to say an obscure one. It's a different one. I think it's the last Dynamite, no, it's not the last Dynamite character we'll talk about. But we're talking Betty Page. Now, who is Betty Page? I completely understand if you don't know who this character is. Betty Page is this pinup model from the 50s. She became like the face of pinup for her iconic black hair and blue eyes. She was the person that kind of started that wave, became like the ambassador of pinup, became like the face of an entire organization, the face of a lifestyle, really. There are Instagram accounts dedicated to like that aesthetic and that lifestyle. It's kind of fascinating if you ask me. And in recent times, she's kind of become her own comic book icon. It's one of those things kind of Vampirella-esque where you're taking this character who could essentially fit into any bubble you wanted and you can have a bunch of stuff. So there's some Hollywood stories. There's some more like mystery stories with this character. And it's fascinating. And it's one of those things where you ask certain people, they're going to know who Betty Page is because she was an icon. She defined an entire cultural phenomenon. She was the face of a cultural phenomenon. But they're still like modern kids. And this is like what I'm kind of trying to get across here with doing this video is you know all of your modern heroes, all these modern characters that studios and, and companies have pushed. You might not know everything about Sheena. You might not know everything about Lady Death. You might not know that Betty Page was a real woman. You might only know that she was kind of like a comic book character that, that was a real woman. They'd put in like pinup poses. Well, guess what? She's a real woman. She has her own comic book series. It's pretty fun. A really con a really cool character. And a really cool woman. She sounds like she was badass, and I, I admire that. Betty Page, kind of fun. I will always tell people, like, this is an important hit figure in history because it kind of starts this idea in the mainstream. 
and I say mainstream loosely because it's like, again, comic books are counterculture. They're not everything that people are looking for. So when you have an identity like Betty Page, who is essentially doing the same thing as Barbarella and Vampirella and Deja Thoris, but she is doing it for people to put up posters on their wall. That's kind of exciting, isn't it? I personally think it's very exciting. And I, I admire the I admire that they did that. <laughs> I think it's awesome. And then we're going to move over to another publisher, and we're going to talk briefly about Tarna, a character from the heavy metal books. And she is, again, an icon, another one that had a movie, another one that people can know. Uh, I don't really know a lot about heavy metal, and I know it's like a big publishing magazine, and they're kind of badass, and they do some really interesting stuff there. Tarna is a character that I, I kind of know solely because of the movie. Because I watched that movie, I'm like, this is very cool. And I, she's the last of her people, I believe. A, pur- a purported race of extremely skilled martial arts. Okay, yeah. Just essentially, what if we did a space badass lady? And uh, hey, that works for me. People have watching this channel long enough, you know science fiction is my jam. You give me a crazy science fiction lady who's wielding a sword and riding a weird pterodactyl thing. I'm all for it. That is my shit unequivocally. And Tarna is kind of getting a, a like a modern relaunch, I think because people want to do something with the property and because like she is badass. What if we tried to make something new with her? Makes sense to me. Just a powerful, crazy space lady off in her own reality, saving the day, doing the Barbarella's thing, but more Barbarella Red Sonja based. And that's kind of exciting. An iconic design, too, like the white hair and the red armor and the black lace. It, it works. And look, the character we. It's funny to me that the character that we have talked about the most, Barbarella, is the one that is the most sexual base because she uses sex as a weapon. She's the one that wears the most clothes. And I think that's amazing. The character who is the most sexy is the one most dressed up. That's kind of fun to me. But there you go, Tarna. Heavy Metal is an interesting one. I know people have a lot of reverence for it. I haven't had the moment in time to really get into it, but it's something to look out for. So moving from there, uh, we're talking about a little bit more modern characters. I say modern loosely. So Witchblade. Yeah. So back in the 90s, Image had their big thing. Mark Silvestri is like, "I I I have an idea. What about a woman in the NYPD who finds a weird thing called the Witchblade, and when she puts it on, she gets some weird armor and becomes a criminal superhero person? Witchblade, again, kind of in the Lady Death thing, is like an over-designed character that I have no affiliation with, but you have to put her on here when you're talking about like the iconic characters that aren't from the big two, because she was like... Image is like leading lady for a minute. People are like, which which blade kind of fucking rips? She's kind of cool. She's kind of a badass lady. I admire her completely. And I'm like, yeah, she is kind of fun. That is like an idea to explore, having that character do something. So I think that's kind of interesting. It's a very, very graphic like design where there's just a lot of like edges and cuts and all these sharp points to her, which makes sense because that's what the character should look like so i can't fault them for doing that but my goodness is it a lot of character but it works fine i don't hate it i just don't really care for it so we're kind of getting into the image boom right now because we're going to talk about a couple other image characters the next two i have here are very recent i say recent loosely one of them's very recent another one's kind of semi-recent but when you're talking about like these kind of like important ladies of comics, I wanted to put like a modern representation of what I think like a modern femme fatale looks like in this vein. So I went with Cassie Hack from the hit comic book Hack and Slash. Cassie is just a monster hunter. She goes around finding these horrors and she fights them and she kills them. And I think she has like that iconicness to her where she can be viewed as one of these like more modern depictions of these ladies with like today's sentimental values where it's like she knows how to be a person from today's audiences she knows how to reach out to them we'll still have kind of like that sexy nature to her of like the badass goth girl because that is another big selling factor for a majority of these characters is the badass goth girl energy she has that you know 
mess shirt bra and just a, a big axe or a big gun or just something to hurt people with how could you hate cassie you know she's kind of badass that way she is kind of badass that way and hack and slash is a really strong book and she's a character who has become an icon in her own right so i felt it was right to put her in here and talk about her because she matters and the most modern character we're going to talk about today is this one it is Adventure Man. Now, this is a book that I have been singing the praises of since it came out. And I, I'm putting Adventure Man on here because she is a the most modern depiction of like that classic thing rebooted. She's like your Doc Savage, Zoro-esque character where she gets all this power from finding like the old hidden base of Adventure Man. And Claire gets this newfound power and finds this entity. And I thought that was a really compelling story. It was one of my favorite like reimagining of like a classic character of recent because it just works so well and adventure man is a very very fun very positive very bubbly character and a really fun book so i wanted to put claire on this list because i think she is going to eventually fit into the mold of this when people start to think about her more if her legacy endures she will become one of these icons of comics and i love it just f fitting the bill of like you know the more Doc Savage adventurous type of character where we've had science fiction and horror and all those other aspects. Well, what about one that just becomes like, you know, a strong guy, superhero-esque adventurer? That is what Adventure Man's going to do. So that is 14. I bet you are wondering who the last character on my list is. And of course, we're headed back to Dynamite Comics because we're ending with one of my favorite creations of all time. Uh, as much as I love Elvira... I just spoiled it, didn't I? Yeah, I was gonna. Yeah, it's Elvira. I was gonna say as much as I love Barbarella, I think Elvira might edge it out. Elvira is specifically tailored to my likings as a character. She is funny. She is humored with her body. Is that the right way to put it? Look, she knows what she has, <laughs> and she uses that to be fun. She has had two fantastic movies, a really fun macabre show, and so many great comic books. And she is. The most iconic, which is why I'm putting her last, because, well, she's endured the test of time and will outlive us all. But Elvira is just an icon of comics in her own right, starting with DC, moving over to Marvel, moving to Dynamite, becoming the face of all these great books, just bringing horror back in the icons in these funny, creative ways, and that is what Elvira does. I love this character. Everything I do in my life is just kind of like... How could I write a story as good as the character of Elvira? How could I create anything as iconic as this character? I love the Halloween theme. I love goth people. I'm just going to throw that out there. That's one of my uh, things I think about a lot. I love big hair, too. So she fits the bill perfectly. Just like a funny bicon. I love it. She's great. And Elvira, so many great comic books. She, just like a lot of the other ones we've talked about, has a lot of mini series out right now that are all worth checking out because there's so many great stuff to pick from. And she just represents like that classic horror, Halloween, dark apothecary energy. And I, I love that energy so much. And I think there's so much to explore in that. And she has just become one of my favorite things to talk about in the world. I could talk about her forever, but we're only going to give you a couple minutes now because you can bet your bottom dollar I could talk about her all day and what she represents all day. So, if you want to find out some more iconic women of, of comics, that's who I have for you. Barbarella, Vampirella, Red Sonia, Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, Lady Death, Hell Witch, Purgatory, Pantha, Deja Thoris, Betty Page, Tarna, Witchblade, Cassie Hack, Adventure Man, and Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. These women are iconic. All of them deserve a rebooted movie. And I think if Red Sonia and if Barbarella prove to be awesome, we'll be getting a couple of these coming very soon. Very soon. Love it. I love talking about all these characters. Any excuse to talk about any of them makes me very happy. So, glad I did this one. Glad I did this one. So, thank you guys for watching this episode of The Geek Wave. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. 
Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.